Again, in Hawaii, drawing doesn't make you cool, right? What makes you cool is like surfing and sports. sports yeah. Right? And then a lifted yoda. One sick dog, people. <laughs> yeah. Hunting, yeah. fishing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> drinking beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sucking them yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you say like a dream collab, I have a term I call it. It's called a grandma collab. A grandma collab is a collab my grandma would know about. I don't have to tell her nothing. I could just. Drop it on the table. Look, grandma. You know, and she can be proud. My favorite thing was when I did Adidas, right? And I told my grandma I did an Adidas collab. And she didn't have to ask me shit. She didn't have to ask me who Adidas was, yeah, what yeah. does Adidas do. Actionable aloha, doing something towards somebody else, mm -hmm. which resulted in aloha. Mm -hmm. So until it's given, it's not aloha. What a great way to end the podcast. Yeah. Oh, no, you're not done yet. We, you, can't, <laughs> you ain't going to Kailua yet. <laughs> We got a couple more questions. Sit Can we put that up. clip yeah. in the very beginning yeah. of the podcast? <laughs> Velina Maikako, welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by always staying high and never low. I'm your host, Kamaka, and 96720 represent today. We have an awesome episode for you today. But before we introduce our last guest of 2023, I got to remind you to check out keepitaloha.com to buy some KIA merch. But... If supporting us with money is not always possible and you still love this podcast, please consider leaving us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to us. I read every single one and to prove it, let me share this heartfelt review from Ekahi underscore. This person says, my number one podcast in 2023. Kamaka, mahalo for creating great content for Keep It Aloha. It was my number one podcast and I listened to this it's the number one podcast I listened to this year and I'm not surprised. The guests on this show are great. I've learned so much and it has inspired me to venture out to deepen my connection with the Hawaiian culture and language. I'm from Maui living on the mainland and listening to this podcast helps me get a little piece of home on my daily drives. Mahalo ekahi underscore and we hope to continue bringing you awesome content in 2024. But right now, let's introduce our guests. Support for this podcast comes from Texco in Hawaii, which features 58 convenient locations across the state. Fueling up at Texaco is fast and easy when you use the Texaco mobile app to pay at the pump. The Texaco mobile app is a contactless way to pay for fuel so you can get in and out of the gas station quickly. Fuel your car and fuel yourself. Pick up your favorite local snacks and ice cold drinks at your neighborhood Texaco today. Texaco at Tecron, driving performance. Our guest today is a professional muralist slash artist from the Big Island of Hawaii. This husband and father of two has collaborated with brands such as Nike, Adidas, Taco Bell, and so much more. His art can be seen on giant murals, clothing, jewelry, album covers, surfboards, and pretty much anywhere you can think <laughs> of. He's a Gila boy just like myself, and I am so, so, so stoked to talk stories with him today. His name is Aaron Kai. Aloha, Aaron. Welcome to the podcast. Aloha. Mahalo for having me, yes, bro. Yes, it's so stoked. good. How you doing? <laughs> good, bro. It's we, been a long time We finally coming. made it happen. Yeah, yeah we're out we, here. We met. Over a year ago, maybe? Yeah, a little over a year a, ago. Was it at like, Mary Monarch or did I? At uh, Kekoa Casimero's Oh, yes, event his event. At Bishop Museum. Yes, with the, the shirt that I'm wearing right now. For cleaning up Vava Malu. Let me turn around real quick. <laughs> Give people a little. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, there you yeah, go. That's my art. Yeah, no, super <laughs> sick. I've always heard of you because my brother's been a fan. Because he used to follow your your brand Lemon back yeah. in like the early yeah, 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he would always talk about you and Kuhao growing up. Because yeah. he got into some graphic design and everything. That's dope. Um, yeah. And then you you knew my my younger sister. Because yeah. you used to go to um go back to the, yeah. the school. And then and share my share, manao yeah. about art. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I know your sister. Because she attended Kamehameha schools, Hawaii. And I'm that's my alma mater. So then... I went back 2017 to go give a talk and I do this maybe like I try to do it once a year but honestly I've only been back three times so far but each time you, you see like a group of kids who are actually interested and they reach out to you on Instagram they reach back they follow you they comment they like stuff and so all those kids right I would follow them back Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm the, I'm the big homie. Right. So mm -hmm. I got to go follow these little kids. I want to be artists one day. So I follow maybe five or six of them and your sister happened to be one <laughs> of them. And then this other kid, um, Nainoa Rosehill, who 
they they were classmates, and he ended up being an amazing artist. I mean, is an amazing is an amazing artist, but it's just so random that you know follow your sister. And then I saw I saw her post a story one time. She was in class, right at uh-huh. college, and this dashing. Hawaiian brado comes in with long hair <laughs> and surprises her, right? <laughs> so that was the first time I like seen you um, through her IG. But that leads me to my first question. I'm going to interview you. Oh, now. okay. Oh, well, change them up. Are you going to bring your long hair back? Because <laughs> I think you're pretty, uh, you know. <laughs> I I do miss the long hair. I think it, it had a great flow. But that was some mono, bro. Yeah, I think just like, Taking care of it, it got really hot in Hawaii. Surfing <laughs> yeah. was hard because it would always get oh, in my yeah, face. Yeah. And like right now, I can't go through the awkward phase again because I'm always on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if I grew it out, I could wear a hat. But then I go to some professional events. Yeah. And I can't wear hats over there. So I'll, I'll just look weird. And my hair grows like a chia pet. Where it just Shame. comes straight up, yeah. just like the <laughs> Japanese hair, and then it falls down. Yeah. So it's just like bowl cut. Like yeah. so it, it looks really weird. So I don't know. We'll see. As of right now, I don't have any plans for the long hair. <laughs> I know you had short hair like this, and yeah, now yeah, you yeah. got long hair. I grew it out during COVID, so I yeah. missed the whole like weird the awkward phase. Yeah. But yeah. No, it just looks wore solid. a lot of hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy was touch and go for a little while. He was like, What are you doing? <laughs> No, I like Once it. Once you can put yeah, it back, then exactly. you're like, fuck yeah, I made it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I love it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this episode. I'm so happy that this is the last episode of 2023. I get to talk with another Hilo Brada. Yes. Sir. We've been connected over the last year. I've been to a couple of your events. Yeah. So you're just a, just a solid Mahalo person. Mahalo for your support. Yeah, always, yeah. always. But I want to start at the beginning for people that don't know you. Where are you from? Where are you grad? And yep. what was it like growing up? Yep. Um... I'm from Hilo, Hawaii, uh, and I graduated uh, 2007 from Kamehameha. I was the second graduating class from that school, which was pretty, pretty easy, to be honest. Like when it comes to high school, right? Because when I was a freshman, there were no seniors. The oldest kids were sophomores. Mm. So I was kind of like a junior in a sense, right? So... It made my high school career so much easier to like make friends. But at the same time, I think since we were the first like two classes graduating, me and my older brother, we were the first two graduating. We kind of, there was no one there to like show us the ropes, Mm. right? Or like be like, this is what, this is what the cool kids are doing, wearing, this is where we hang out, da, da, da. So we kind of had to take it upon ourselves and be like, this is what's cool in Mm -hmm. this school, right? Because every school, you got, you know, different things that's cool and whatnot. Obviously, football is always, Hawaii is always cool, right? So I didn't play football. So I wasn't very, like, I wasn't part of that, like, sports coolness. So I kind of had to create my own cool, you know. And so I grew up playing basketball, and then I, I stopped playing basketball around high school. I focused on surfing. And then I was doing that a lot. And I would go back to school and draw in my notebook. Draw whatever I saw on the beach. So I'd draw a lot of waves, um, especially in art class. I had a lot of art classes at Kamehameha. So go surf in the morning, go to school, draw waves, not pay attention, draw, 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 go surf after school, and then boom, go home, eat, wake up, do the same thing, you know, like. It's all there is to do in Hilo, surf, right? To stay out of trouble. So I did that. And I was drawing a lot. Everyone was like, oh, he's, you know, when I was in elementary, from then on, from back then, a lot of my classmates were like, oh, you're good at drawing out of our our classmates. Like, he's Mm -hmm. the drawer. He's the basketball player. He's the football player. Everyone falls into their roles. Yeah, yeah. And so... Mm -hmm. I, I touched back on it when I got to high school and kind of focused on drawing. <clears throat> and so I had a really good art teacher at Kamehameha, Mr. Gary Hoff. He was, uh, he's on Holly Guy. And he was the, he did the Hilo Tribune Herald um, mm. political comics. So that was his job. But he's really good artist, really good teacher, good mentor. And he kind of pushed me to focus on art you know, and you're in art class, you got a lot of like, 
you have a lot of Kalohe kids there, right? That they're not trying to do nothing. They're just trying to waste a period, whatever. And so, you know, when you're younger, again, going back to like, what's cool? Like being cool back then was, that was gold, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, go to art class. I might pay attention a little bit, but I'm probably, you know, wasting my time with the other Kalohe kids. And then Mr. Hoff kind of reeled me in and was like, you know, you're you're a little bit better at art than these other kids in your class. And like, I know he knew I wasn't good at anything else, mm-hmm. right? Like math grades, English, everything, really bad grades, Ds, you know? My dad was tripping off my grades. Mm-hmm. So Mr. Hoff kind of knew like, this is the one thing that this kid's like good at. And like, if, he, if I put him in front of a paper with a pen, he'll just draw and he won't say anything. Mm-hmm. He'll keep to his own so shout out to Mr. Hoff um, <clears throat> and in middle school Miss Kirsch one of my middle school teachers but so again you know just kind of reeling it back in this story um, I I had really good mentors really good art teachers that saw the vision before I did and kind of dialed me in to focus on art and that kind of what that's kind of what made me cool mm. right but again in Hawaii Drawing doesn't make you cool, right? Because what makes you cool is like surfing and sports. sports. yeah. Like anywhere else. And then a lifted Yoda. Yeah, lifted Yoda. (laughs) One sick dog, pit bull. Um, Hunting, fishing. (laughs) Drinking beers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sucking them up. (laughs) So, yeah, so we did all that too, right? We did all that growing up. Everyone in Hilo does all that. Um, Suck them up, cruise them at the beach. Check out the chicks, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Um, but, you know, what am I going to do for a career? Like, what am I going to focus on? What? So I decided to go to um, art school. or go, I decided to go to film school and move away from Hawaii. Because um, looking back, you know, growing up in Hilo, I was like, there's, it's like those things are what makes you cool. And those things are what kind of, in my my young mind back mm-hmm. then, 18, 17, right? Like these are the things that people hold up as value, yeah. like strongly mm-hmm. hold to their core. Like this is what makes you a contributing member to mm-hmm. society, right? Playing football or whatever. Um, and so I wanted to move to the mainland, um, specifically San Francisco, because I knew that there are more art, related and the, the people there were more at least what I thought were would be more more aligned with what I'm into mm-hmm. and so that's what ultimately I made a decision to leave when I was 18 um, and yeah I think it worked out um, but I guess going back to growing up in Hilo and how that was is like you know talking about there's a lot of there's a lot of ego in Hilo, right? Or in small towns in general. I think young men don't really know how to express themselves, mm-hmm. right? So you get into a lot of fights, yeah. You get into a lot of a lot of riffraff and stuff that has nothing to do with any mm-hmm. anything that matters. You know, you might look at someone's exactly, chick, exactly. Boom, now, yeah. you, now yeah. that guy and his whole family wants to scrap you or whatever it is, right? Or Maybe this this guy's girlfriend is too friendly or whatever, too, mm-hmm. you know. I know, you'd even do anything. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff, right? Growing up in Hilo, so it's like kind of a lot of those things, you know, made back then uh, made me want to leave and kind of just explore like what else is out there and, you know, maybe open my mind to how the other, how the West, more of the Western world acts and how that how that is. Because my dad, he was very... My mom and dad, both Hawaiian, um, both grew up in Hawaii. My mom's from Kamuela. My dad's from Honoka. They're very like country, but they're very like, they wanted us to see more, you know? Where did they get that from? I think my grandparents, because my grandpa, who he passed away, RIP, but uh, Mm -hmm. he, he was a very like entrepreneurial guy and he, he worked for, a bunch of different like companies. Um, well, he started off as a police officer in Hawaii and realized that HPD kind of has like, there's a hierarchy. And so he wasn't going to 
make chief, you know, in the time that he wanted, right? So my my papa kind of saw that. This is kind of the history of my family, right? Mm-hmm. See, he saw that and he, in his business mind was like, I can't provide for my family if I'm not going to make chief by the time mm-hmm. I'm 30 or whatever age, right, he had in, in his mind. And so he decided to leave and go work in sales and do like, you know, sales, it's kind of like a, it's a Western job, mm-hmm. right? Like we don't sell stuff in Hawaii. We, yeah. <laughs> we trade. We trade, so, yeah. Barter. Yeah. So he kind of, uh, he did that and he did a bunch of other like, businesses that he started like food distribution so he used to work in the mac nut oh, okay you know which selling, is cool yeah, yeah. you have a partnership with <laughs> yeah. Manolo mac nuts yeah, yeah so he actually worked for uh royal hawaiian what is it royal hawaiian orchard okay um I which remember. now i believe that's the name of it but they own mauna loa oh, okay. and all those so it's full circle i yeah. know that's um awesome. but while he was doing that i he saw my uncle told me this story so it's kind of like based off of his story right so he he started all these other distribution businesses for like food and stuff because he saw how easy it was to like make money off of uh, a commodity that grows so well in Hawaii so he tried to do some other things and so I think kind of that's where that spirit and that idea comes from on that side from my dad's side um my mom's completely different. She grew up like Hawaiian homes, poor. My grandpa was never around. Um, and so for her, it was not having anything growing up. I think she wanted to just have it all, right, mm-hmm. in a sense. So for her, she wanted us, you know, they were kind of, they had a, our kid, they had kids already. They were stuck on Big Island. But I think if it was up to them, they would have left and raised us probably here in Honolulu. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I think both sides of my family kind of have this like entrepreneurial spirit, this uh, follow your passion spirit. My dad started his own business and my mom helped him with that. And so, yeah, it's, a, it's I'm grateful, you know, as, as, a, as a kid of those, of parents like that, it, I, I do miss, like, I, t- I talked to you at the mm-hmm. uh, Mauna Loa event where I was like, I, I wish I could olelo mm-hmm. fluently like you. And my parents just weren't those kind of Hawaiians, you know? It's like they were more business oriented. And so sometimes I am spiteful about it, mm-hmm. you know? But I'm but the older I get, the more I'm like, I they raised me how they thought was right for them in that mm-hmm. era. And um, yeah, can't complain. You yeah. know, the I mean, only, you still, you still, I can t- learn Olelo maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that's, you know, you turned out, you turned out okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm not, you're like, not in jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, not I, right now. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> yeah. um, nah, but that's like the thing about Olelo Hawaii is not everybody was into it. Like mm-hmm. the 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 fact that I was raised with it and I speak it among just a few thousand people, such a blessing and something that I didn't even appreciate growing up. So uh, good. And like hearing people these days, you know, wishing that they had that kind yeah. of experience. Um, it's just, you know, it depends on your situation growing up. Yeah. You know, not everybody had that same upbringing. But like you said, it's never too late, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you're super busy there, there's resources um yeah. it's easier to do it when you're here yeah, you know so ho- sure. hopefully you guys make it back to the island yeah, at some bro. point you get some aina on the big island can send your kids to some hawaiian yeah. emerging schools or kamehameha because like, the best way to learn is with your children yeah yeah um because the hawaiian emerging schools are very it's a very uh like I don't immersive yeah. <laughs> experience yeah. where the parents and the family is very involved yeah. as well with like classes and activities and yeah. all, all these events happening. So it's did, where did you did you go to Naalehu? No, no, I went I to mean, Navahi. Navahi. Yeah, I went Na'alehu. to. I've been to Naalehu before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to yeah Punana Leo, then I went to Kaumekakaeo and Keokaha. So I. I I, like my childhood was, Where's was Punana Kilkaha. Leo at? It was, it was Punana Leo or Hilo. So it was like kind of by KTA, Point of Call. Oh, okay. And then it, it, they moved to Keao after. Oh, so I was okay. one of the last 
the last uh, classes at Punana Leo Hilo. And then they moved to Kiao and then Kaumeke only went up to, I think, seventh grade, sixth yeah. grade. So for seventh grade, I went to Navajo Hill Colonial Pool in Kiao. Mm, nice. Yeah. So I had I had that whole experience. But then I, what you know. When did you graduate? 2011. Okay, okay. Yeah. But then my senior year of high school, I moved here to Kaiser. Oh. To play sports. Because oh. I was like, I had the, the other experience from you where I, I was sports all my life. Yeah, yeah. I never served, What'd never you play? did art. Soccer, soccer. Oh, okay. And then I got into football. Oh, nice. So I was like Kyokaha Warriors and yeah. then played for Ilo High. <laughs> and then I came here to play football. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wanted to do that in college because that was cool. To yeah, me, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like being an athlete was like the highest level of respect you can get. Yeah. So, Don't worry, bro. Yeah. You st- still get a couple years for be cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still working my way out there. No. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, no, we, go I got, play, we go play catch after gotta, this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's relive our, our childhood. You teach, you teach me how to draw and then I'll throw yeah, yeah. the football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny though when we talk about like the definition of cool and what was cool growing up. Like if you, if you even… Scrapping was cool, Scrapping bro. was cool. If like you being could not, hard. Like if you, if you like… If you got in one fight that past weekend and you came to school yeah. and you're like, bruh… And every all the boys is like, oh, you just went scrap, bro. You see yeah. them, you see them. And they yeah. show the videos. Like, yeah, I remember that's people cool. post it on YouTube. They <laughs> yeah. go to graveyard. They go to Puna. Yeah. Scrap. <laughs> like, yeah, there was like shipmen for us. Shipmen, shipmen, yeah, 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 yeah. Shipmen, exactly. Go shipmen. So come yeah. out, they would kick you out, right? If yeah. you scrap. So literally, everyone was like, I cannot, I cannot scrap because <laughs> my dad will beat. The shit out of me. I'm not worried about you beating me yeah, up. I'm worried yeah. about my dad. Seriously. <laughs> everyone, right? Everyone's like my dad. He, yeah. My dad said, he told me when I got into the commandment, he told me he would fucking beat my ass yeah. if I ever got in trouble. It's funny because like, because I played soccer. So that's how I knew the people from other schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And football, of course. Yeah. Um. So the people that used to go to Kamehameha and like they're at public school now, you wonder like, oh, how come they… They're not there, but they either got into a scrap, they got into some sort smoking. of trouble or smoking. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and it's funny because like in Hilo, it's there's not much to do. You smoke weed, drink, or have babies. Yeah. And, and then like the things, you go to the waterfalls, you go to the beach, whatever. Yeah. Like what else are you going to do? Hunt, yeah. fish maybe? Yeah. So like you you just got to find… Th- if you're not involved in like sports or extracurricular That's activities… So funny, you're probably going to get into some of that. Like I I never… Like my, my brother was a big uh, weed smoker. Yeah, yeah. Like he got in trouble one time. Like uh, I no think wonder our, he was our st- a fan of mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got in trouble before and like I would cover up for him. and But I was like the more straight edge kid just focus on like uh, sports and stuff. But… Um, Growing up in Hilo, I swear, like, seeing, like, uncles and, like, because none of my parents um, got in, like, smoked or drank or anything. Yeah. So, like, being with, like, the other kids' parents and seeing, like, they just, like, potty. Yeah, and, like, bro. I would be going to uh, football practice with one uncle. He'd just be smoke, yeah. smoking one joint, <laughs> driving, passing it back to the kids in the back <laughs> right before football practice. And, like, even at Navahi, I would… I, w- uh, I don't know if I… I'm sure I can say this. They can't get us in trouble. Like, I would… Because a couple students, and I can say who, a couple students would, would sneak out to the side and smoke. Yeah. And then I would be the lookout. Yeah. <laughs> like I would stand like All around right the on. corner. Like I was always, I was always right like the, the homie doing that. And yeah. like even in… Um, we would, we would skip the pico, you know, you have to yeah. like do all the chants and yeah. stuff before you start. I would hide in the bathroom and like, <laughs> or um, do that with like another student and they smoke or like going like, I would always be like, yeah, I get secondhand. <laughs> like that was like my coolest thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's just funny, like childhood, thinking back to like yeah. what you thought was like cool. I talk to my wife about this all the time, <laughs> right? And I'm like, it's so funny because in Hawaii, we're like in Hilo, or all of Hawaii, Pretty much is the same Small towns. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's like, okay, we go to, like how you just said, we go to the waterfalls, <laughs> rivers and beaches, right? These Prince really Cleo nice… Plaza. <laughs> no, but these really like nice serene places yeah. that should put you in a calm state of mind. It's like, and what do we do? We just like smoke weed, drink and scrap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. That we is have like all a, the beauty around us and what do we want to do? Fight angry. each other. <laughs> yeah. Like that's always like my wife, you know, she's from California. She doesn't, she don't know shit about that. Yeah. Like she don't know nothing about like, bro, I mean, this guy's like looking at my chick. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't know anything about that. Like the way you, 
we think like the way stink eye yeah like yeah, yeah so that, that's so interesting it's fun though talking to her about bro i was watching your podcast and the uh sister that was right here was talking about uh chicken skin oh yeah goosebumps yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they say goosebumps yeah. over there so we're back we're in hilo and i'm like oh chicken skin yeah. huh because you know in, we're in, you're in hilo we're when I'm in here, I'm just fucking pigeoned yeah, out. You yeah, go, you go code switch. Yeah, yeah bro, you, I'm code yeah. switching yeah, hard. Yeah. yeah, like straight pigeon. Like, bro, yeah. fucking chicken skin. <laughs> uh, looking around. Ah, uh, boys. She's like, chicken skin. What are you talking about? Why are you dude? talking like yeah. that? <laughs> nah, she knows, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, wait till his dad comes. Wait till you hear him talk to his dad. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's all those little things, bro. It's funny with certain people, like I, I, this is how I speak normally. Yeah. And um, I don't really speak pigeon. Like I would, I use pigeon words. Yeah. And then like, but I saw as soon as I see one like local uncle, like, oh, how's it? Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, mean the way he's out. <laughs> like I just like directly yeah. go. To me, it's like so I want your stomach. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, holding my shirt <laughs> yeah. like this. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somehow it just it just comes out and it. A green bottle appears. Yeah, yeah. I don't even drink, but yeah, I have yeah, a green yeah. bottle. One doobie in one yeah, hand, yeah, green yeah. bottle. Yeah, well, yeah, pa- yeah, pass that to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go hit him real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny, but I just, I love the pride that we have growing up in Hilo and being from Hilo. Oh, because yeah. like, I think I was just thinking about this driving a couple of days ago too. It's like how prideful we are being from Hawaii. And yeah. it's like how prideful people are being from their hometown. Whether yeah. you're from Texas and you yeah, know they yeah. have that Texan yeah, pride. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Hawaii just having the that bay. Hawaiian pride. The Bay. Exactly. <laughs> like it's just so cool to like be a local yeah. from someplace. From where it, it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's like you, you, I feel like you have this superpower. Like yeah. I think I thought about it because… So um, true. Oh no! See, I was I thought about it because I was filling gas at Costco. Yeah. And um, this this one car went in front and in front um, there's like three stalls and there's like a middle one. So she went in there, wasn't thinking of anything. So I was fil- finishing, and then the one of the workers, one of this local uncle, comes to talk to her. I didn't know what they were saying, and then like she was looking confused, and then she left, and I was like. Oh, what happened? I said she didn't cut the line, <laughs> and then and then he's like, yeah, and then like we just had like a it's like a super local yeah. interaction. Like yeah. I, I just said like, oh, did she cut down? Like oh, she didn't cut the line, yeah. and then he said something back, and I was like, yeah, like made a face. <laughs> I don't even know why. I'm like, where is this coming from? But it's like that that yeah. interaction between yeah. a local and a local yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. so special. Yeah. I just yeah. love it. I mean, even even like having you here versus just like somebody that I, I'm not familiar with. Yeah. But I know you're from here. I know we're local. And it's like, Barry, just crack up. We can get the same yeah, jokes. E- yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's it's a, it's a the coolest thing about being from Hawaii for me. I yeah. think just being able to relate and have those real local experience. Like you already have like these inside jokes yeah. from growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That people are going to know and yeah, people yeah. are going to get, yeah. you know, so… I, I I just love it. Uh, one yeah, thing I want to so talk true. talk about because you you left Hilo at, at an early age, you yeah. know, seventeen, eighteen, and yeah. that's that's a huge step, especially coming from a small town. Like, were you afraid? Um, how did you integrate into like the California life? Mm. Um, so I had one friend that gra- she graduated a year before me at, from Kamehameha, and she went to San Francisco. <clears throat> so. I knew one person. Mm. So I was definitely like scared. But my type of personality is I don't get scared. I get excited mm. for like new, new anything. Don't get me wrong. Like surfing, when big wave charging, scared. You know? Yeah. That's when I get scared. But it's like new opportunity. Like, uh, like I don't know. For example, like we went to Art Basel our first time, you know, years back. And it's like, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Like, I have no plans. But it's like, I'm going to hit the ground and figure this out. Mm. It was like, so fun not knowing what could be. So when I first moved, I was like stoked to, for one, to be out of my parents' house. Two, to be in the mainland in like what I would consider at that time for me a big city. Mm -hmm. Um, But now I look back at SF and I'm like, that's just a small city. (laughs) But it was, you know, you got high rises, you got tr- public transportation yeah. that goes every five minutes. You got, 
even at the bus stops, I'm like, they got like little tickers that show you yeah. the bus is coming. Oh, yeah, it was the Hele on. And yeah, bro. The, the biggest whole, um, the building on. is the Naniloa. Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah. have any, we rarely have two story, three story. Or that story one building, condo right? down by the singing bridge. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, right past it. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> There's not much, right? So, yeah. and then, yeah, and then everyone knows each other mm -hmm. in Hilo. I wanted to go be anonymous, you yeah. know, and like be, you, you know, like how, bro, we grew up where it's like so, such a, I, and I loved how we grew up. You small town, everyone knows each other. I got arrested one time, you know, mm -hmm. all the cops play basketball, my dad. <laughs> it's embarrassing for mm -hmm. him, right? He's over there picking me up. With his boys over there. Like, it's a small town vibes, yeah, yeah. right? You know, you live in a big city. There's no embarrassment like that. <laughs> Nobody knows you. You yeah. can get away. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was excited. I was stoked. Um, and like I said, I had that one friend. And uh, she had a fake ID. So she would be able to get us beer and stuff when we first moved up. Um so I moved up there, linked up with her. We went to different schools. I had to catch a bus to even get to where she mm. was at, like 30-minute bus ride. Um, so I was like, yo, this is crazy. But mm. like, I'm out here <laughs> mm. in, the, in the Bay Area, in <laughs> California. Yeah. So I linked up with her. And then I was, you know, basically like, do you have any, like, who's your friends? Like, what's, what's the friend group like? And she had a few friends that like I hung out with, but... That was the beauty of like being on your own for the first time. It's like I get to build my group friend group. Mm -hmm. Like I get to pick my friends. I'm not going to school and being friends with this guy because his mom knows my mom, or I'm a, his cousin, or we just we went to school together mm -hmm. since seven years old. So like we're automatically You're have obligated. to be boys. Yeah. Like nah, man. I get to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I and it was is. It was. I mean, I'm making it sound like I'm like buying toys, right? But I'm like <laughs> going you, to KV toys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you get to pick and choose, right? So it's like, how do you pick and choose your friends, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how, literally, I'm sitting there with no friends, right? Like sitting in my little studio apartment. My the school I went to didn't have dorms. It was a tiny film mm -hmm. school. So you and my classmates were not my age. I had one classmate who was like 55. Oh. You know, yeah. and most of them were like in their 30s because they're going to film school. You know, you got to kind of be older to yeah. to really wrap your, your mind around film school. So I had no peers at school. I had no peers, you know, anywhere. So I kind of had to figure out where I'm going to go hang out to meet people. So I went, I started hanging out at this store because I was like, what am I into? Like, where am I going to meet like-minded mm -hmm. people? So I went to this streetwear store um, that sold, you know, streetwear clothes, T-shirts, pants, hats. Um, and then they had like art on the walls and stuff. And in my head back then, I was doing lemon, mm -hmm. Hawaii. I was doing lemon clothing. So I wanted to be in these stores. So I, I got into the stores. I opened up some lemon accounts in the stores and ended up being friends with the uh, workers over there. And, you know, slowly I'm, I'm doing my thing. I tell this story all the time, but I, I used to work at a law firm and I would draw on these stickers that I would steal from the back room because I was broke. So I'd take these blank stickers, I would draw on them at my desk, like during work mm -hmm. while I'm clocked in. Um, my bosses were, long story short, my bosses were cool. They didn't really care as long as I got my work done that I was like drawing. So I would draw all the time and I was I would go to the store because I worked downtown. The store was the store was like halfway from my house at the time to my job. And I walked to work every day back then. It's like a mile and a half each oh. way. Good exercise. Yeah. Um, so I'd walk back and so I would end up making a stop at that store and I would hand out stickers to the workers, you know, like, hey man, check out my art. <laughs> You know, like, it's like a, a rapper giving out like yeah, a, a right, music right? but then it's yeah. all free, right? Yeah. So then they're like, "Oh, sick! These are," and they're mm -hmm. like, "Are these hand drawn?" And I'm like, "Yeah, bro, I just drew it today." You know, I'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> blowing these kids' yeah. minds because we're all young. So if anyone gives you something like that, you're like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. I'm I'm important." So I make friends with the, with those guys, and then. Um, now we're like actually boys, you know, after a couple months go by. And so I, t 
talked them into letting me do a pop-up at their store. And that was kind of the first pop-up I did um, ever but on my own. So my business partner from Lemon was still here in Hawaii. So I was up there by myself. And I was like, I'll, I can just do this shit by myself. So I got all the inventory, did the thing through the event. It was, it was, you know, it felt amazing. I'm like, I have all these people that are supporting me that I never had before. Finally got a group of friends. Um, I still didn't meet this guy yet mm-hmm. in the in this story, right? Yeah. I still didn't he's, meet he's, my manager. Yeah, in my he's story. pointing at his manager, chilling on the couch off camera. Is my yeah, manager yeah. over there? <laughs> um, so, so I still didn't meet him, but we met at that store. Oh, okay. Right? So, so it was a hub. It was a true hub for us. Uh, you know, twenty two years old. Um, so I'm making these friends. I'm throwing events there. I'm making more friends that are now throwing their events there, like other artists, other photographers, other creatives. And now when I'm meeting people and shaking their hands, introducing myself in San Francisco, oh, I'm Aaron. Aaron Kai? I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) Damn, that's tight. That's cool, You know? And then so me and him meet um, at the store. One of our friends, a photographer, was doing a, a photo exhibit and he needed someone to paint his name and all that stuff on the side of the wall. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I got you. I'll do it. So I went in and hand painted the, the letters. Aaron Lau went to the event, <clears throat> the, the photo event, checked out all the photos. And then he was like stuck on the lettering. And he was like, asked the store owner, who did the lettering for this thing? And so he, we introduced, he introduced me to him. We linked up the next day, like hang out and you know it's just like same shit you look at someone and you're like oh shit this guy's wearing like the kind of clothes that i would wear Mm -hmm. and like he's into like the same music that i'm into and he happens to have your name and he's oddly has my name (laughs) (laughs) i know and it could be i know it loud but it could be a hawaiian name yeah yeah. Yeah. (laughs) yeah and so funny story bro so his one of his family's last names is kai no way. So he has a cousin whose name is Ian Kai. My brother's name is Ian Kai. Yeah. So hella, hella random. We both got Ian Kai's in wow, it. Wow, that's but crazy. Yeah. Aaron and Aaron. So that kind of came about too. Like the whole… You became like… Now the, that we introduce ourselves yeah. and like, Aaron and Aaron. Like, <laughs> we've, been, we've been getting that for like the past 10 years yeah. now, you know. Does it ever get old? We're used to it. Yeah. So I think… You know, like maybe like around year two, mm-hmm. you're like, it's getting old. Yeah, like I've never heard that one before. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? But then around like year five, year six, you're like, you know what? This is their this is their first time. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to think about it. <laughs> yeah. We always talk about it too. Where like there's… Aaron is kind of one of those names where it's a little… It's, it's not so common that when you do meet two Aarons, you're like, two Aarons. <laughs> Because we've been in the room with two Matts before, mm-hmm. two Johns, yeah. two Joshes. Mm-hmm. No one has ever been like Josh and Josh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good, yeah. So, but yeah, so, you know, went, made my friends, met this fool. Um, again, I kind of, back then, you know, you're trying to piece together my friend group. So just meeting all these guys and then like literally me and him, we're hanging out, hanging out. And we met. One of our other good friends now, uh, Calais, we had no idea who this guy was. And uh, he was part of my wedding party, you know, wow. like he was in my wedding. Like all these guys from SF were all in my wedding. And then uh, and then some of my friends from Hilo too. I had three Hilo boys and five guys from California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, there's like different people that play a part at different points of your life, yep. right? Like you have a best friend in college, yep. a best friend yep. in high school, yep. best friend in like whatever, like my best friend in the Peace Corps, my best friend, whatever. And then your best friends pretty much just become like either your coworkers or like the people you spend the most time with. Yep. Like, you know, for example, Jordan, our videographer, like we spend so much time together. Yeah. So now we're like super tight. Yeah. You know, that's my yeah. boy. That's like my Aaron love, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's just, and it's funny because Jordan was telling me um, one time when we were just talking stories that isn't it crazy about um, like growing up, your friends are by luck. Yep. Just pure chance. Yep. Like what you were saying, yep. like yep. 
uncles, yep. uh, son. So you're like, that's your cousin yep. and you got to be friends with them or you go to the same yep. school. So you don't really choose. It's really just proximity. Mm-hmm. Like my my best friends were because we played soccer. Yep. And like, I, I love them. But like, it's like different levels because like, I don't have the same relationship I have with them that I do with Jordan or yeah. like people that I, I met in college or, you know, more recently in my life. Yeah. You know, but we're all still close, but it's just like a different dynamic. But it, it's it's interesting to think about that. It's like, wow. Like my best friends whom I consider like my boys, my family, that could have just fit anyone. Like yeah. that's just pure luck. I did not choose them. Yeah. I'm just lucky that I got placed with them. Yeah. And that we're still tight to this day. Yeah. You do in a sense though, I feel like you do pick, right, to a certain extent. Cause like for example, I went to school with, you know, let's say 24 guys. I guess you could choose like you I'm don't want to hang out Yeah, with I'm not guy. like all, I'm not boys at all 24, yeah. right? But so you do, you do get to choose in a little slight sense, but it's definitely I like… I guess your option. Here's your roster. Yeah, like yeah. you have no choice on your roster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then no you… No one's getting traded. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, unless they, they got to move yeah, to like Kodokawa or <laughs> Vegas or something, yeah. Or Oahu Kodokawa. or another <laughs> island, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's such an interesting thing, but yeah. Well, there's this there's this uh, quote I saw or read on IG or someone's like real or something, but it's like the some of the people who will love us the most in our lives we haven't met yet. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. and so yeah. that's kind of like what I'm talking about when I was talking about me and me and this guy. We met mm-hmm. Calais together. Like we, we, me and him were just hanging out, you know, being boys, and then it's like this fool comes in. And we literally meeting him. So we, he was letting us in the door to go mm-hmm. hang out with like this other guy that we were supposed to meet with. We end up being more boys with him. Oh, that's crazy. Because he's just more like aligned mm-hmm. with. So, you know, and then he's in my wedding. It's like, that's how like, yeah, clo- how good of friends we all became. But it's it's cool. You know, you get shit like that happens where it's like, bro, this I met everyone that I'm gonna need to know in my life. Yeah. Like, nope. I don't know, but I still feel like, like, um, as as somebody who's more of a homebody and like I'm more naturally introverted. Like, I go to these social events for work. Yeah. Like that's where I get all my socialness. But I'm like, I feel like I don't want to make more friends. I already got five friends. Yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah. need any more. You know, I get to that yeah. point too. And like everyone else is like a business connect yeah. or like, um. Some sort of networking opportunity. Yeah. But I also don't want to like have to think of it like that. Like this is just a network opportunity yeah, instead yeah, of like yeah. a friend, whatever. Yeah. So it just depends on like how deep that relationship goes. But yeah, it it's I like I like that quote. I remember seeing it and I thought more in the sense of like relationship wise, mm-hmm. as in like a romantic relationship. Like you're you're not gonna you haven't met like all the people, like for people who you know, maybe yeah. aren't in a relationship, just got out of a relationship, thinking like, oh man, that was the one. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. could be something better around the corner. Oh, yeah. Through yeah. that door, you yeah. know? And that goes with like opportunities in life yeah. and it's like with business, yeah. like whatever. Um, you Maybe you do a design, you're like, this is the best design I've ever done. How am I ever going <laughs> to get better than this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you do it and yeah. you're like, wow. Yeah, and then I you look back was, five you know, years and yeah. you're like, that's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I, I do that with like um how I dress. Like I would see old pictures. Like the the style of clothing were crazy. I mean, a lot of it was like long, longer shorts. I feel like yeah. Um, tube socks. Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would see picture of me at like Disneyland and like whatever, like elementary. I'm like. I would never wear that. Or like <laughs> growing up would just be like a huge, super long shirt. And it's like, you can barely even see my shorts. Just walking around like that. Even soccer. girls. So- or just wearing your soccer yeah, jersey yeah. around. Um, I remember like thinking, um, buying a, a collared shirt with flames on it was the coolest <laughs> thing. Seventh, eighth grade. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this is it. <laughs> like, it might be lit, right? You bring it back. Yeah, maybe. I mean, a lot of things do come back. You know, so we'll see. So your your time in San Francisco that that was a, a pivotal moment in your life. It really like kickstarted your career and 
you yeah. know, gave you all, all, all the network and confidence and like Definitely. friends in your life. And then from there, how did you capitalize on that and turn it into like a full blown career with now you're just like one of the most successful artists from Hawaii? Mm, thank you for that. But um, so in the Bay, in San Francisco, we have a thing we call is there's guarantee there's a term like in Hawaii, but it's called Bamus. Okay. Famous in the Bay. Oh, famous. Bamus. <laughs> nice. Right? So you're, there's a lot of people that are Bamus. Yeah. And so we, I was Bamus, you know? I was, everyone like knew me. You go to a party and people know you. Because mm-hmm. the Bay Area is not as big as you think. It's not, mm-hmm. the mainland is not this grand, big, giant. Like once you get into these little like like-minded circles, mm-hmm. it's just like Hawaii, bro. Did you go into the same room, you see the same people, <laughs> like, oh, what's up, Daniel? What's mm-hmm. up, Mike? How's it going, man? Like, what do you guys been up to? How's the girlfriend? How's mm-hmm. the dog? You know, like it's the same people, mm-hmm. right? Even in LA. You go to LA, same mm-hmm. shit. So we we kind of hit like a ceiling, I think, in the bay. And to be honest, like the cost of living up there is just ridiculous. So I, th- we're renting, you know, and I think rent um, was a lot cheaper in LA, but also the more opportunity in LA. Mm-hmm. And at this point in time, at, this was 2015. Yeah. Tw- 2015? We moved 2016, right? So the beginning of 2016, we moved to LA <clears throat> to February 2016. And basically we from like June 2015 to like December 2015, we were going back and forth to LA driving in my wife's fucking shitty ass mm. Ford Focus, two-door Ford Focus. Worst suspension in the world. We were going, three of us, packing up. Me, my wife, my girlfriend at the time. Me, her, and Aaron Lau literally packed in this Ford Focus going up and down the five. That's a six-hour drive, you know? So we go, you know, once a week, basically. Not once a week. I'm exaggerating. Once a month. Some months it was twice a month. But back and forth, back and forth. Like putting that car through hell. And so, you know, we all sat down and we're like, should we just move to LA? You know, like, because we're there all the time and we're getting way more jobs there than here. And so we're like, if anything, we could drive up here when we get Mm -hmm. jobs here and like, let's like move Mm -hmm. there. So it started, we had some friends already in LA um, because we would come down, hang out, do events, meet people. Um, So we had a lot of, a lot of friends in LA, a lot of Korean friends. <clears throat> so they helped us. I don't know if you know about LA, but there's a lot, of, there's a big community, uh, Korean community, mm-hmm. um, big, big Korea town area in LA. And so <clears throat> we met a bunch of our Korean homies. And so they convinced us to live in K town, which is the best idea ever. If you ever move to LA, move to K town. If you, Unless you can afford West Hollywood, then I'll move West Hollywood. But so one of our friends was looking for apartments for us. He ended up finding a few spots and um, he was, again, he's Korean. So he's talking to Korean landlords. Thank God they all, they only speak Korean. So he figured it out, ended up getting us a spot. And then that took maybe like two months or so to get situated. And then February moved down to LA and just kind of tried to hit the ground running, you know? Um, take meetings. Me and this guy are just trying to take meetings with whoever, like anyone who's local there, anyone who's got a business, like, you know, let's chop it up. So I think the, I see a lot, after living in LA for a while, I've been there, what, seven years now? So you see a lot of people move there hoping to f- hoping to get their feet wet. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, you should fucking move there when you're ready to swim, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. get your feet wet in your town, wherever you're at. Become famous. Become locally famous in your own little town to where they can't even 
you know, there's no jobs left for you there and then go move to the big city, if you will. Because once, because like you have that buzz, right? So now I have a, I have a fan base in San Francisco. I got a fan base in Hawaii. I got a fan base in LA. So for me, it kind of takes the pressure off of my back as far as like selling stuff and doing events and reaching an audience. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I know that if I go to the Bay, I know I'm good. If I go to mm-hmm. Hawaii, I know I'm good. If I go to LA, I know I'm good. So it's, if I could, you know, keep doing that and then move to New York and do that in New York and keep building these fan bases, I totally would do that. But got two kids now. Yeah. So I think now, you know, I'm just going to focus on, this is why, why I'm like kind of focusing back on Hawaii and trying to just give back to the community that gave to me and kind of be more part of this community and kind of, you know, take care of the roots here. Because mm-hmm. um, the like I said, the Bay Area is pretty much good to go. And then LA, I live there. Mm-hmm. So I can always, you know, get what I need from there. So that's kind of why, you know, you've been seeing me a lot more often here this yeah. year. It's cause no, it's so cool to see somebody who's like mm-hmm. made it from Hawaii, living outside and always coming back. It's like the same where like, seen Jason Momoa come back oh, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> it's like, wow, this guy, like the representation is huge. Seeing, yep. oh, this Hilo boy moved to LA, made a career for himself, but never forgetting where he came from. Yeah. You know, always trying to give back to the community that raised him. Yeah. It, it does something psychologically in your mind. And like just seeing that, that's why I love supporting people who are from Hawaii yep. and like whether they live outside of Hawaii or not. Like it's... It's inspiring. It does a it does a lot for the the future generations. Yeah, and it, it just it it creates a possibility. Yeah, sometimes when it you opens a door when you never thought there was a possibility. Because yeah. like growing up in Hilo, I don't even know who I look like. I looked up Kuhau. to BJ Penn. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like maybe that was like the only person. I mean, you have Kuhao is a for hella. me. A Kuhao is yeah. like the one guy you know. That you but yeah, no, like literally. Who, like who else? Like yeah. what did we look up to? Like I didn't. BJ Penn for real. I didn't know what jobs were out there. Like if yeah. I wanted to live somewhere else, I I didn't have any business knowledge or like entrepreneurship yeah. background. So it's like, frick, I see people like my, my dad just has a regular job working at Alulike. My mom went back to school. She's a nurse. My stepdad works for the the government, um, the, the city and county, whatever. And like, okay, so we have to get a job like that or I got to yeah. go work at Walmart or yeah, one of the, yeah. the restaurants, like yeah. a hotel. Like yeah, what are yeah. the, the possibilities? Yeah. Like there really wasn't, at least to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny, bro. My my uncle, <clears throat> so my dad's side, they're from Honoka, yeah. And um, my uncle that dropped me off here, he uh, he just posted. So he's a pastor. He does Inspire Church. Oh, Mike yeah. Kai, if you guys are mm-hmm. um, want to go to church, go check him out. So he's he's a pretty big pastor, um, and he grew up in Honoka. And uh, he just posted the other day that, <clears throat> they the the bank that gave them a loan f- to kind of build their church, um, which is a big deal, right? To get a l- loan f- for got you know a couple mil. I don't know because it's a huge church. So so he got a loan, and the guy that gave him the loan was this the what the head guy at the bank, the the branch manager yeah. at that bank. He was from Honoka. Oh, and it's just like even you know like. Like even though he might just he might be working a job right like a like a he's not like an artist like me but he's the branch manager it's a nice like sweet job and it's like you know it's something like that too where it's like guys from Honoka who might bro, guys from Honoka you know what their vibe is right they go work no. Waikolo yeah that's yeah. it there's no other they work the the hotels so like that for example in my mine i'm like that opens up a whole you know a door where it's like bro these kids from honoka you can be a bank manager on oahu and you get paid good money and mm-hmm. you get to support your family and da 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 but where it's like you don't need not everything needs to be right there in mm-hmm. your backyard and you yeah, know you don't have to feel trapped yeah to whatever and i think mm-hmm. it's there's a like 
it's there's there's good in both sides yeah like i think being being comfortable with being able to stay where you're at and knowing that this is what i this is where i want to be i applaud that you know mm -hmm. and cool. then also being like i want to go see stuff i applaud mm -hmm. that it's like both sides i just like you know, you know, you know what yeah. you want to do and you, you go after it and you figure it out. So like, so for going back to the Honoka kids, it's like, bro, if you want to go work one ranch up Malka, bro, then be the best, mm -hmm. right? Be the best at it. If you want to go work the hotels and same thing, bro, then be the best. You know, I think that now that I have kids too, it's, it's more puts everything into perspective. Yeah, it's like, I don't, honestly, I don't give a shit what you do. Just don't do anything illegal, but like, you know, do your best, mm -hmm. right? Give and it your be all. happy. Mm -hmm. But like, literally, like, try to be the best, though. Yeah, you know, uh, like, no. you know, might not, you might I not be the best. That. But like, I love that. You know, like that advice. Just yeah. be happy, though. That's mm -hmm. the main thing. Happiness yeah. first, and then whatever you're, whatever you're pursuing. Mm -hmm. No, for sure, because we we get so fixated on like people who are successful in, in the eyes of others yeah. um, doing these these things that kind of going against what normal society views as like a regular job. Mm -hmm. You know, an artist, a musician, an uh, entrepreneur. You know, it, it's it's all like anomalies. Yeah. But then, we, like what you said, like that's, that's not always meant for everybody. Like yeah. some people are just meant to stay in their hometown and be a great mother. Yeah. Or a great father, yeah, yeah. or a great auntie and uncle, or contribute just, to that community, yeah, or just like help out with your family. Like that's your role, yeah. And like sometimes people excel at those things, yeah. You know, so it, it, you don't have to have this feeling like, oh, I'm stuck, and like I could do more with your life. Like we could all do more with our life, yeah. We could all be doing something else, yeah. And you know, like I could be an artist if I re if I really put the time and effort yeah. into it, but. I feel comfortable in the role that I'm doing and yeah. I'm just going to do that to the best of my ability. Yeah, yeah. So like you said, like no matter what you do, just do it to your best Yeah. and be happy. Yeah. Bro, there's a saying in Japan. I don't know the Japanese version mm. of it, but it's like everyone's job is important. Mm. Right? So it's like the garbage man, the bus man. Like these jobs where in America, we don't look at them as like high, highly you know, wanted yeah. positions. Like, bruh, in Japan where everything is like, you know, pretty sweet. Like, they appreciate everyone for their role that they have mm -hmm. in the community, right? Because without a garbage man, it's going to trash everywhere. Without mm -hmm. a bus driver and these people without cars not going to be able to get anywhere. Like, there's, you know, and it trickles down. Like, all these little jobs where it's like, bruh, all of this is important to the ecosystem. So it's like, you know, you go somewhere like LA where everyone wants to be important and no one wants to like do the job. The service industry over there is just completely in shambles, right? Like no one wants to give you service, for example, because everyone's too like the, their cool. pride is too, <laughs> yeah. too big. Yeah. yeah, to be, you know, for please and thank yous and mm -hmm. sir and ma'am type stuff, which, you know, I don't expect to be called sir right but i'm just it's just like one of those things where people in in my opinion in some areas in la i don't want to you know encompass the whole town but some areas some people it's like they're just so think that they're gonna you know be just this big movie star, whatever it is, big important person and nothing else matters to them. So they don't want to really, mm. you know, help out. So it's nice to go somewhere and see people like appreciate their job, yeah. take pride in, you know, working at a grocery store, or, like, you know, stuff like that, bro. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. The the people that have been doing it for a long time too, like, bro, like an uncle that's just been a, an electrician or yeah. a plumber for like 30 years. Like that's doing anything for more than 10 years is tough. Oh yeah. You know, like how many people can say like, I've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. I've been doing this for however yeah, many. Yeah, yeah. You were always bouncing between things, trying to find what we like. Yeah. But at least those people, they they found something and at least they're consistent with it. Yeah. Even maybe they don't love it as much as something else. But I mean, they show up. 
Yeah. Brother, we need more uh, trade guys. Yeah, no, definitely. Because ev- everyone wants to like do what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but who can fix our car yeah, when we man, don't know, right? Pick up one hammer, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these hands, these hands are untouched. I cannot yeah, build <laughs> build anything with this. Yeah, I get little artist hands, bro. <laughs> My little hands. All I could do is paint. Yeah. Look at us. Yeah. <laughs> we need help. Come on. So you guys are important. <laughs> That's so funny. Nah, for real though. So I, I mean, going back to that, one of my neighbors, I have a few older neighbors. One of my neighbors is a electrician and the other one is a carpenter. And both of them are early retired. Mm. Chilling, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. I love those guys. Yeah. Okay. Before we get into a quick shishi break and we come back with social media questions, what would you say is happiness to you? How would you describe mm. happiness? Mm. Happiness to me, honestly, is when you can truly live in the moment and you're not thinking about anything else, but like right then and there, that's when you know you're happy. Mm-hmm. And it comes in, it comes, it, you know, not the whole day isn't happy. You know, your whole life isn't happy. It comes and goes. And you, that's why you got to appreciate when you're happy. Mm. So, but that's my, cause I, I noticed that when I'm with my kids, sometimes I'll be playing with them, but I'll be thinking of <clears throat> a project that I got to do or whatever, you know, it's things that aren't important in that moment. Or I'll be on my phone looking at something, you know, and literally my three-year-old will grab my hand and like, <laughs> That that's that's so cool you say that because uh, so I've I've gotten to the point where I do whatever makes me happy and yeah. I don't care what people think. Yeah. So Sundays, ever since a couple years ago, I don't do anything but watch football. And I make it a point. Like I don't work. Like yeah. even when I when um I used to live with my my ex girlfriend, uh I would say Sundays I just watch football. I don't care and what you do. So you could <laughs> Yeah. You could go do whatever you want. Yeah. I like I'm sorry. This, like, this is what I want to do. You mm-hmm. could be here. You could be with your friends. Whatever. But this is what makes me happy. And I I have to do that because I, I realize like when there is an event or I don't have to go somewhere and I try to be around other people. All I'm thinking about is football. Like I cannot <laughs> be present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, you know, it's an unhealthy addiction maybe. No. But like that's what makes me happy. Yeah. And it, like you said, happiness is what… Um, being happy in the moment, like yeah. being present. Yeah. So I think back to like Sundays where I'm just like, I, I cannot focus yeah. unless I'm watching football because that is what makes me happiest on that day. Yeah. So it's like, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an extreme example, but… No, but I mean, yeah. it is little things. You know, my yeah. uncle, his happiness playing basketball. Gotta do it. Yeah. He gotta do it like yeah. every week. Yeah. Even yeah. if it seems ridiculous to yeah. other people… Like, why you got to go do this? It's yeah. so stupid. Like, why are you playing that video game every night before yeah. bed? You know, yeah. it's like, if that what makes you happy and brings true, you joy… Man. I never thought that, about that's that. That's true. Happiness, because like, okay, I, I look at it like this. It's like, okay, I'm watching I'm watching football all day on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's the difference between that and like, you online shopping? Yeah. Or like, you… You watching going to a Kardashians. movie or watching the Kardashians or doing anything throughout the week. Yeah. This is just one one day of the week that I want to do it. Like, what's the difference between somebody going to surf every day yeah. and spending hours in the water? Like, it's just that it's you're staying at home watching yeah. TV, so it's not look. And it, bro, girls got a problem with watching <laughs> football. <laughs> That's just what find, it is. Find bro. you someone that can do it all, <laughs> bro. Girls, some girls just got problems with watching football. Yeah. How's your current girl? She like watch, she lets you watch football? No, we, well, she did, but we broke up a couple <laughs> months ago. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I've talked about it openly on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. So you just yeah, didn't see news you, you didn't see that episode. Uh-huh. You're like four episodes behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she she was super cool with it. Like oh, okay. me watching football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like I told you, like I'm not gonna be with somebody who's not gonna let me do what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then like I made a point. Like this is what makes me happy. Yeah. And whether they like it or not, like this is who I am. Yeah. Well, yeah. girl, if you got a, a guy who's into sports as a girl, you got luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. But you got to understand, like, bro, yeah. like you guys are into Kardashians. Yeah, or like no one judges you for that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just because of how people value certain things, like you said, like yeah. how everybody values in True. Japan, like everybody's job. So it's like watching football <laughs> isn't as like seen as productive that's as not, like that's not productive doing a happiness. workout or going on a hike yeah. or. Uh, like yeah, drawing I, or something. 
But like, if you take a step back, it's like, what the root of it is that somebody's doing something that they're passionate about that do that makes yeah. them happy, and they're they're putting time into that. Yeah. So that like that's how I look at it. Yeah. Like, that's why I'm not like embarrassed to be like, sorry, I can't do this. I'm gonna be at home watching football all day. Yeah. Who's your team? Yeah, Saints. Okay. 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 Yeah. Got a little on my flask over there. Okay. Do you have a team? Oh, are nah. you? Okay. I know you did a crown with the Rams, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I mean I'm a Rams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Hell yeah. All right. Well, great answer. Let's take a quick shishi break and we'll be right back. Immerse yourself in the underwater wonders of Hawaii's marine life with Hawaii Ocean Charters hands-on guided snorkeling tours. Whether it's your first time falling in love with Waikiki or you're rediscovering its beauty just like me, there is no better way to see it than from the ocean. Personally, it was one of the best things I have done this year. I got to snorkel with some turtles and fishes and I was able to catch the coolest sunset over the water. Conveniently located in Kakako with online booking and live availability, finding the perfect day on the water couldn't be easier with them. Ride in style on their unique and well cared for power catamaran that offers all the amenities you need. Locally owned and operated, their friendly crew lives for sharing their love for the ocean with others. Sunset cruises, guided snorkeling tours, well and dolphin watching, coastal sightseeing and firework shows are among the tours their guests love the most. Use code KIA50 to get $50 off of your next charter. We're back from a quick shishi break. Mahalo to our drink sponsor, Shaka Tea, for providing the best quality shishi. <laughs> You know, um, I saw Gabe outside from Rice Hawaii when yeah. I was coming up. Yeah, and yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah, he said yeah. You, you was with him. And then he's like, brah, something in the water in Hilo or something. <laughs> this producing all these, <laughs> these, this talent. It's the, it's the hose water. That's <laughs> yeah, what it, it is. is bro. It's the you know tap water. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like the tap water yeah. in Hilo. Bro, the tap water is the best. It's, it's the, the best. only place in the world I drink the tap yeah. water. Yeah, Aaron Lau says San Francisco tap water is mean. It is pretty good. Really? I've had it before. Huh. I would But he said this past so. trip he went on, he drank it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sucked him right out the faucet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it was mean. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we get the, the yeah, I think so, natural yeah. immunity. It really yeah. is. Huh? It's yeah. literally it's the water and then it's probably like the like the doo-doo water from Honolulu. <laughs> Yeah. A little bit when the when when it rains after yeah. big rains, yeah, <laughs> seeps into our bloodstream. <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, getting into the social media fan questions presented by Texco in Hawaii. This question comes from another Hilo native, Prime Footage. Oh, nice! Shout out to Big Germs. Stop Germ. Uh, he asks, "Will you ever bring back? Will you ever bring back the brand Lemon?" My brother also <laughs> asked me that the other day. To tell I knew you, that was gonna that. come yeah. from Germ. Um, bruh, me and Kyle. So, if anyone out there has real estate in Hilo, we wanna we're trying to open up a, a retail space downtown Hilo, and if we ever do, we will definitely bring back Lemon Hawaii for oh. a capsule collection. Nice, but yeah, well, you heard uh, it here first. Yeah, we get a couple. We get a, a few Hilo people. You know, older people from like my age or like. You can bring back lemon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day. All right, one day. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. Man. All right. Next question comes from Tara Bold. She says, "How do you keep up with art when you want to give the f up?" <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a good question. How do you keep up with art when you want to give up? Um, honestly, don't give up. Um, I, one of our quotes we have in the Bay Area is that legends never quit, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm say it again because it's such a simple saying. Legends never quit. Mm -hmm. I saw I Because if this. you're a legend, you're not going to quit, you know? You're yeah, never well, going to stop being a legend, so. Yeah, you probably won't become a legend if you quit. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that same thing, right? Your legacy keeps going up and up and up. It's as long as you keep... Mm -hmm. Keep pursuing it. Keep making art and keep trying. Trust me, you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. All it takes is someone to see you. So. Yeah, I, I saw this Don't one quit. actor on a podcast. It was like a clip on Instagram that was talking to somebody. And he's like, the only difference between the people that make it and the people that don't is the people that made it never stop. Yeah, They never quit. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. like the difference between successful people and people that 
never find success is that the people who, still doing it. Yeah, who found success, they just never stop. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's so what you don't have to quit. Do. Yeah, don't quit. Tara. Yeah. Nice. Good. Great advice. Okay. Uh, sorry, I just gotta take one night to no, sip. You're good. I just, you know, being Portuguese, you know, he's <laughs> a lot of words per minute, right, coming out of this mouth. <laughs> I gotta refill. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Clint K. Pander. Anderson. Clint K. Pander. I, I, there's a P there. Maybe Clint K. P. Anderson. Yeah. Oh, let's say that. Uh, says, you know who this person is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Says, first, congrats on the continued success and for being an amazing Makua Kane. Inspiration for Kanaka artists and representative, representative of Hilo and the Lahui. Question is, as your perspective on life, as your perspective on life has evolved over the years, what do you feel is your kuleana now when creating art that you put into the world? Mm. I think my kuleana now in my art is to tell more of a story and tie things back, um, you know, more to our culture. And I think that's kind of what I'm trying to do more. Um, whereas in my early stages of my career, everything was just about being pretty. Mm. You know, and not too much like, like the behind it was like all the the work and the surfing and all this stuff, right? But for me, the first I mean, 10, 12 years is more about making everything pretty and getting, you know, like, look at this shit, sick, mm. right? Mm-hmm. But then now I'm like, you know, this past year coming back to Hawaii a lot and, and obviously having inspiration from Uncle Sig and Kuha'o. Um, and their art of storytelling, which is super cool because years ago when I asked Kuhawa for advice, he told me, he's like, you got to tell a story. Mm. He's like, people love a story, you know? So finally, years later, I'm taking his advice and trying to make my art have more of a, a backstory to it because I find myself being drawn to Hawaiian art Kanaka art that has a backstory. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's where my my kuleana is gonna take me in my next journey um of my art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love that. When you were first talking about telling a story, I immediately thought uh, thought of Sig Zane. Yeah, yeah. Because they're they're so good at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. They and that's he, like the the standard yeah. of storytelling yeah. with um turning that into a design. Yeah. 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 I love it. Because I think like with the sim simplicity of everything like my style and Sig Zane's style it's so simple and so like impactful that in a sense other people start to see that and like I want to do that Mm -hmm. you know so they might borrow some inspiration or whatever from your style and again going back to what makes it what makes like Sig Zane designs like so special is that story that's attached to that simple design. And I don't want to say simple, like easy, right? But just a very, it's all you need to get the point across. Two colors, three mm-hmm. colors, you know, and and uh, a silhouette sometimes, right? And I think that's so beautiful, like that you could just do that. Because same thing with my waves. It's not, it's not a whole lot of stuff going on, mm-hmm. right? It's real simple but it's like here's the vibe right there yeah the but it really right stands there. out it yeah, pops thank you. yeah, yeah thank i you. mean look like this, this is your like official logo yeah yeah mm-hmm. one of and them you have it tattooed on your your oh, arm oh yeah too. yeah a couple what is the so that's just like total inspiration just from waves growing up yeah um so like i actually when i first started drawing waves they were more like realistic and like I would draw, you know, like little peelers like mm-hmm. that, like kind of coming on. Here, let me show you guys. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. <laughs> you know, like the little peelers. You know, you, you know, Hawaii people know it. Right? I you draw like these little peelers, some water ripping off the top, a lot of lines going through it. Um, and then slowly I started kind of like making it more rounded off. And I started seeing like shapes within the waves that are look better. Mm-hmm. 
in the wave than like some of my other shapes. And so like how we're talking about, like you looking at yourself, how you used to dress like X amount of years ago. Like I look at my waves from 2015 and I'm like, these are trash. <laughs> <laughs> but but in a, you know, endearing way, like yeah. these, like I've, like I've, I could do better. I've grown. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've, I've come a long way mm. from this. And so a lot of the evolution of my waves, the different changes in the style, um, it just came from drawing them over and over and over again. And then having people that I trust, like Aaron Lau, my wife, some homies be like, I like that one. Mm -hmm. Like that one looks sick. Like out of all the waves, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, it does look sick because it's kind of it's ripping off the mm -hmm. back and it's like it's a little out of control and deranged and it's kind of taking like what you see, what you're actually seeing within adding like, you know, the vibes mm -hmm. to it, right? like what it should look like. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is what a wave looks like, but it would look a whole lot cooler like this. Yeah. You know, so super cool. That's my Love vibe, it. you know, try to make take things. Like this leaf, for example, take it, somehow try to make it into my style with mm -hmm. the line work that goes through it and try to remain true to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a good lesson. Like see something, get inspired, but make it your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Awesome. Tell stories. <laughs> okay, next question comes from Mariah Papaya. This person asks, any advice for Hilo slash Hawaii kids who choose to stay? Mm, yeah. Hilo kids that choose to stay, I would, first of all, I'd applaud you and say Hilo is beautiful and you're lucky to be living there still. Um, but my suggestion would be to get involved in the community um, and try to use your art um, to help out the community in, in one way or another. Like, for example, you know, we got like Ho'olaulea every year. We got Merry Monarch every year. So my suggestion would be like take those opportunities um, of big events that happen in Hilo and try to capitalize on that with your art. So maybe offering to do a live painting or a mural or a mm -hmm. T-shirt design for, you know, KWXX or Merry Monarch or whatever it is like. Oh, for someone at the craft fair, reaching out to other artists on other islands to do collaborations or brands on Oahu, I would just suggest like stay busy and try to try to network with from Hilo. Mm -hmm. You know, so like being in Hilo, you can still hit up people on the outer islands. Whenever people come to Hilo, you can try to make time to to work with them somehow. Um, but I think another cool thing that I would like to see in Hilo happening more often would be little pop-ups downtown, you know, like nighttime events where maybe me and my wife and the kids are back in Hilo and I can, I got somewhere to go, you know, and check out and meet new people. And that's like how we were talking about earlier in the podcast. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I met my friends and how I met a lot of like-minded people. So doing little events like that, finding a shop, you know, that'll let you pop up for free. That's essentially the goal. That's mm. how you make money. That's how you get your first few pop-ups, you know. Mm -hmm. Can you do this for free? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what people aren't always prepared for when they start something is that you're going to have to do it for free for a while before yeah. you ever get paid. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. what's her name from Hilo? Mariah, Mariah Papaya. Mariah. So yeah, I, I would suggest another thing too is keep your... Uh, Keep your overhead low, so keep your costs down. Mm. The less money you need to come in every month, the more freedom you have to be mm -hmm. creative, mm -hmm. right? So if you only got, you know, a couple hundred dollars in bills, I don't know your situation, but mm. it's easier that way to mm -hmm. be creative and to plan things like pop-ups. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't necessarily, if you don't have a whole lot of bills, you don't need a full-time job. You can work a little bit to make your money and then go focus on art to, you know, maybe you work two days a week, focus on your art five days a week. But I think just committing mm. and being like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. You know, like how you are with the podcast. Yeah. And then that's a good point because I keep my overhead low in life. Yeah. Like I don't buy a lot of things. Yeah. I have rent and truck payment. Yeah. I don't have student loans. So 
I think just like not having too much to worry about gives me the freedom to do whatever I want. Start these businesses, yeah. start the podcast, and yeah. now you know I get paid from it. So it's it's nice to have that have that supplemental income. Side note: This has nothing to do with you, Mariah. But <laughs> side note: Like you know, like keeping your costs low is like don't 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 let social media tell you what you need. Mm. Don't let social media convince you that you gotta go spend money to buy the, you know, like buy these nice clothes or this fancy car or, you know, you gotta rent, pay expensive rent to live in a fancy apartment. Like, bro, you don't need any of that. That doesn't impress anybody. Like, mm -hmm. if you can keep, like, how we're talking, right? Keep your costs low, bro. You can keep your creativity flowing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, you know, I got, I, I got kids. So I got to have a house. So I got my mortgage payment. I got the, my wife's car, my car, and then I got bills. So it's like every month I got to make that, mm -hmm. you know, from my art just to yeah. be, you know, which is fine. It's what I signed up for. But my advice to younger people, you know, just keep it low yeah if you're in a position to keep it low yeah, yeah. that you're able to like you say yeah. live with your parents live yeah. with a family as long as you can until you're yeah. ready to you know go out and spread especially your as wing. a creative yeah yeah, yeah. not everybody has that, that opportunity but if, if you do then take advantage of that yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely okay great answer next question comes from kylie paka this person says, when is he going to do a Pawahi apparel drop? Or when is he going to do a mural at KSH? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've actually been talking to Komeme, um about it. And we're trying, to, mm. we're trying to get a mural situated at the campus. Oh, hopefully cool. next year. Oh. Um, but I've been in talks with Kumu Pao and Mr. Helm who's the art teacher and the uh, counselor. And so they're pushing for it. They're trying to get it done. So we're, we'll see. We've been talking All about right. it to them. Stay so. tuned. Sneak peek right yeah. over here. But yeah, fuck, bro. It, to, to, it, we do a mural though. Me and my wife were talking about that. We're like, we need to make merch for the school. Ooh. We need some oh, like, that would be cool. like sweats. That would be so sick bro, if their so uniforms lit. had Iron Kai. Yeah, with Kamehameha on top. You they know? would make them the coolest private school uniforms. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like uh, my my wife's family, their kids, they have like, she, one of her sisters is like rich. They mm -hmm. send their kids to a private school in the East Coast. And the East Coast schools, like private schools are no joke. You know, mm -hmm. that's, they invented that shit, you yeah. know? So they got merch. Like <laughs> I go to my, uh, my in-law's house. So that's their grandma, the kid's grandma. And she got like kitchen, the hand towel to wash thing. It's got the, the school on it. Wow. She got sweats from the school. She got like a fleece zip up jacket. She got a mug. Everything Dang. I'm like, come on, School man. School pride right there. Yeah. We yeah. need Kamehameha merch for okay. sure, bro. Let's do it. Let's do it. You heard it here first. Let's get it. We're on the land right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Next question comes from Yo Hagen. This person says, if you could pick a dream collaboration with any big brand today, who would they be? Mm. All right. So for years, my go-to big brand collab. I ch it changed now for obvious reasons. But for years, it was McDonald's. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But now they're doing all these collabs with like rappers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, not that cool. Mm -hmm. But for years, it was McDonald's. But honestly, now I would probably say something like Home Depot. Oh, yeah. Home Depot. That's the dad in you talking. <laughs> well, I want to do collab. I've done like shoes, cool, clothes, cool. We've done that Just something stuff. Something out of the box. Like, well, unexpected. I want to do, I, like my favorite thing was when I did Adidas, right? And I told mm. my grandma, I did an Adidas collab. And she didn't have to ask me shit. She mm. didn't have to ask me who Adidas was. Yeah, what yeah. does Adidas do? I did a Bear Brick collab, you know, which l the younger kids are like, you got a Bear Brick? That's crazier to them, right? My grandma doesn't know what a bear mm -hmm. brick is. I have to explain it to her and put it into perspective. So for me, I'm not like when you when you say like a dream collab, I I have a term I call it's called a grandma collab. <laughs> a grandma collab is a collab my grandma would know about. I don't have to tell her nothing. I could just drop it on the table, 
look, grandma, <laughs> you know, and she can be proud, right? That's so funny. Without having to ask any questions because, you know, you come up, you so proud of your art you did and you, look, grandma, look what I, I did this and she's, cool, yeah, great, yeah. great, you know, awesome. And then you get older and you're like, look, grandma, I made, I did a collab with this, you know, company and they're, you know, they're like, I don't know what that is. And you're like, it's a, they make, this thing and they're like everybody thinks it's super cool yeah. i promise <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like you know collabs with like adidas don't have to say nothing brisk don't have to say anything mauna loa she knows that okay that is. so from anything Hawaii. familiar to grandma yeah <laughs> i love that anything where that generation yeah knows levi's you know i see yeah, doing yeah, a levi's, levi's collab yeah, yeah. levi's were around before my grandma's mm-hmm. time so yeah so dream collabs for me would have to be big, big brand names. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, right now, Home Depot being one of them, that would be lit. All right, Home Depot, if you're watching this, (laughs) hit up Aaron. (laughs) Home Depot, but I would love a paint collab. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. The Aaron Kai Um, paint collection. All right, next question comes from Ikaika Aloha. He says, what was some of the toughest lessons you learned when leaving Hilo to pursue your art? Mm. I don't think, yeah, I I don't think the lessons were tough because I was pursuing my art. It was just like leaving, right? So I think the hardest parts is uh, the first couple of nights, like waking up alone, no family, mm. no one to hang out. There's no no one in sight, yeah. you know? You can call and that's about it. Um, so the hardest part was probably that. And I think a lot of Hawaii kids go through the same shit. Yeah. Cause we all, we're all like so close to our parents and we're so like, you know, we do everything with our families in Hawaii. And, um, and we have our whole family is over here. We got grandmas over here. We got cousins, everyone. Um, in the mainland, you know, it's a lot of these people, their families kind of spread, spread out. Mm-hmm. So they don't see them as often as we do over here. So for me, it was like leaving and not seeing anyone. The f- initial like week was scary, uh, not seeing like your immediate family. <clears throat> and then like the next like two months go by and then you're like, damn, I didn't talk to my grandma in a mm-hmm. while or my cousins. You start thinking about your secondary family and you're like, damn, I'm really out here. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of it is just the loneliness and kind of dealing with that and how to kind of feel at home when you're not at home and kind of making yourself comfortable when you're fucking across an ocean from your family and you can't you know reach anyone there's no i mean you can reach them but it's like yeah mom can't cook me food make me feel better that like, comfort food yeah. you, you don't there's got your no food hawaiian kake. food right? yeah. yeah no food kake, bro. no shoot no yeah. uh, no aloha show you yeah yeah exactly yeah, no mac salad, no plate lunches, mm-hmm. no chicken katsu, no yeah. lao lao. No you get Aaron Lao, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> Aaron Lao. Pretty you solid Aaron alternative. Lau Lau. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think honestly though, food, food's a big food deal, Food is bro. huge, especially in our culture. Yeah. yeah, so you go up there and you don't have any food to eat. You kind of got to figure out, bro, what are you going to eat? I'm going to eat Thai food, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, so you start trying other any food. Asian thing, yeah. yeah, Thai food, Chinese food, something with rice, yeah, yeah. And then you start eating Mexican food, and you're like, <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna eat Mexican food. Yeah, yeah. Then you get you get into that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, during the break, my my sister Kanoi, I checked my Instagram. She said, "Did you post his question thing?" Because I I think she um. Maybe you had a question, so I'm gonna try to FaceTime her. Okay. I, just, I think, think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Also, and I was just checking the message. Kikoa Kazumaro just said, got that Vava Molo tea on. Can't <laughs> wait to hear this one. So shout out to Kikoa. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, check out uh, Ava, Ambassadors with Aloha. Yeah. Okay, let me try to FaceTime Kanoi. It's funny because every time I call her, she's at work. So <laughs> on the plane? I bet you she's at work right now. Like on the plane? Or like just, she just, um, like still on the plane, but like getting off of it oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Maybe she won't, she won't answer. If yeah, if she doesn't, since she's probably working. Because usually she she answers like as soon as like the flight lands or something, yeah. or she's like in transit or something like that. So you guys are what six years apart? Yeah, she's she was born. She's, seven. she's a '90s kid. She was born 1999. 
<laughs> she's she also says she's this December 20, 27, 1999. Oh shit. She had th- four days of December of na- the nineties. <laughs> but she's a nineties kid, that's what she says. <laughs> yeah, so six years apart, yeah. yeah okay, well she didn't ten years younger than me. Okay. Um all right, well that sorry, Kanoi, you missed out. <laughs> Mahal everybody for the social media fan questions. Make sure you leave some for our next guest and maybe a question will make it on the podcast. All right. So coming into the back end of the podcast and I always ask the guests, you know, the same question about Aloha. You know, the name of the podcast is Keep It Aloha. So in your life, how do you keep it Aloha? Bruh, it's hard sometimes. Man. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it's hard in the mainland for Keep Aloha. Uh, <laughs> Somebody cuts you in line, bro. It's hard, but you got to try. I, honestly, coming back home as much as I did this year, it definitely helps. But all of what I just said is very true. So in my life, living in LA, it is hard sometimes to keep aloha and maintain the aloha spirit. But I do try to slow down and... Like that example, right? Like someone cuts you in line, which it happens a lot in the mainland. Doesn't happen in Hawaii at all, ever. Um, unless this one Holly, but <laughs> never really, right? So like over there, you know, it's, you get tested here and there, different things, right? So I just try to like, you know, think back, like, does this matter? Like in a negative way? Is this, or is like the negativity just going to affect me more? And I try to focus on like those little convos you have every day with strangers that you don't know. Um, so for me, right, putting myself in a space like, boom, get cut in line at the grocery store, whatever, right? We're going to live aloha. Talk to the cashier and the bag person at the grocery store. How's your day? What's going on? This and that. That kind of makes me feel better again. And that's to me, that's aloha mm-hmm. is all those little interactions, right? It's not a big like aloha is not a big grand thing, mm-hmm. right? It's more of like all these little things that show you I care. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, I, I, you know, my uncle, he picked me up from the airport. He didn't need to. He brought bentos and then dropped us off here. And it's like, that's keeping it aloha, right? Like, yeah. You know, we went, talked to Gabe and met some of his... Um, the people that work with him in there who are all into art and artists and... You know, taking the time to talk to people like that, keeping it aloha, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it's another thing, bro. It's like holding doors open for people. Mm -hmm. And bro, I know more, me and him were talking about this. Me and Aaron were talking about this. Holding doors open for people in Hawaii means more than a literal thing, right? Like, we have a term these days we call gatekeeping. And people not holding the door open for people, right? And so I hate that. Mm-hmm. Like that's not aloha. Aloha mm-hmm. is keeping the door open for someone, holding that door open. And my best example would be like, you know, I get a project from a brand from, let's say I'm working on the Levi's one. So let's use Levi's. I get a project from Levi's and I'm done with the project. Everything ends on good terms, right? And so instead of just, Like, all right, I'm going to keep this guy to myself, Mm -hmm. keep him in my pocket. I give him suggestions. Like, have you seen this person, this person, this person? They might be able to offer you guys some, like, you know, the same thing you did with me, you might be able to do it with them. Mm. Holding the door open and letting people in is like, to me, that's aloha because you never know. One little introduction that you give somebody could change their life, bro. They could buy a house off of one intro. You know, they could... They could retire off of one intro to one person that needs what they are offering. So to me, especially like what I do, right? I'm freelance. I'm doing this 12 years now. And everybody that opens the door for me, it's like led to bigger and better things. And every every project changes my life, whether it be small or big, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess... With all that said, to me, that's the biggest way you can show aloha is like opportunity to Mm -hmm. the next person. Yeah. You know? That's such a cool metaphor. I didn't think of it like that, holding the door open. Try, bro. Yeah. One of like the best ways I heard aloha explained was I watched this play. 
And they at one point they said, um, food isn't good until it's shared. Just like aloha. Yep. It's, aloha yep. isn't aloha until it's given. Yeah, true. So like all those examples that you talked about was people doing actionable aloha, doing something towards somebody else, mm-hmm. which resulted in aloha. Mm-hmm. So until it's given, it's it's not aloha. Damn. Yeah. yeah. It was deep. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. What a great way to end the podcast. Yeah. Oh, no. You're not done. Yeah. We, you can't. <laughs> you ain't going to Kailua yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple more questions. <laughs> but we, we, are, we are coming to the back. Can we put that though. clip yeah. in the very beginning yeah. of the podcast? <laughs> The first trailer, you know, we always have a trailer um, clip that we post the day before the podcast comes out. That's just going to be be the beginning. What a great way to end the podcast. Still got like two hours more. And then. Oh, I forgot to tell you since this is the last episode of 2023, we're, we're going for four hours. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, let's go. Sorry. Hey, Aaron, get a couple more beers. Yeah. <laughs> Give me green bottles. I know. I remember last event you guys was here. This guy had... He could not stop talking. <laughs> he could close. I didn't leave for so long. And this guy kept talking and talking and talking. <laughs> oh, I'm out of law. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck out, bro. <laughs> it was so funny. Double fisting. Portuguese, bro. Yeah, that's the Portuguese right there. Especially if you get a couple of drinks in them. <laughs> um, but from Hilo. Yeah. Uh, one one thing uh, I wanted to ask, since this is like the the end of the year, um, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Are you a New Year's resolution person? Like, how do you plan going into the new year? Oh man, for for f- honestly, for like so many years, I was an anti resolution person, mm-hmm. and my whole reasoning was being like, you shouldn't wait till this day to be like, I'm a fucking change my mm-hmm. life, right? And I was, you know, I'm always a pursue your passion kind of guy. So I've always been like anti-resolution. But then I think after having kids, it kind of everything puts gets put back into perspective. Yeah. And you're like, it's not about me. It's about them. So like I want to resolve my resolutions now are for like my as a dad, right? Mm-hmm. So like it's be like a better father, spend more time yeah. or whatever. Not not even more time because, bro, I'm there all day. <laughs> yeah. I could honestly use yeah. less time with them. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Hanging out with you guys, drinking beers on a podcast. No, um, uh, patience. Practicing patience. That's my, my resolution. And I think every year since I had kids, it's always been that. Because, um, like, when you're dealing with adults, you know, it's like one thing. You can kind of, you can just be like guy yeah you know and like just kind of huff it off right but when it's your kid and they're just you know just keep whining and whining like asking begging for mm-hmm. stuff and you're like you just kind of want to like be like stop yeah yeah but like how boss. we like how we were raised <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so you know we're in a different era yeah or they what do they call it soft parenting soft. yeah well, this uh, whole generation is soft. They're soft, bro. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so I try again, right? I try not to be soft in that sense, right? It's like you got to be, you're going to be tough, bro. Mm-hmm. But emotionally, we got to talk to you how we want you to talk to yourself and talk to other people, right? Because that voice in their head, they learn it from you as a parent. So I want to, that's my resolution. Be more patient. Talk to them actively try to talk to them more calmly mm-hmm. which i do i don't really lose my cool that often but still you know they're three years old and two years old, one years old and they're boys so patience mm-hmm. nice i love that yeah all right well i gotta start thinking about my resolution it's always just like goals like things i hope to accomplish not really things I have to change like mm. get healthier or whatever i saw this one funny video where it's just like somebody's going down their list of resolutions <laughs> and it's like um do uh read a hundred books and then they just like cross out the the, the zero <laughs> yeah. that is this one yeah. or like uh <laughs> don't one. don't eat fast food yeah. and it's just like don't eat, eat fast, fast food <laughs> <laughs> it's like stuff like that. <laughs> That's funny. Or it's like, don't cry. They, they cross up, mm-hmm. don't, and it's just cry. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I guess like resolutions, I have a, I get, yeah, like I have a hard time making it like, yeah, like read a hundred books. Like do, you know, like mm-hmm. 
I, it has to be an action that I can mm. subconsciously put into my life. Yeah, like be nicer. Yeah, and I think I we we, do we, like a, we aim a little high sometimes. Like I'm not a reader, but I'm going to read a hundred books. Yeah, you know, yeah, I was yeah. like, let's be realistic. You yeah. know, just, just start with yeah. one. Let's, yeah, honestly, let's see if we can get through yeah. Harry Potter and yeah. hundred books, maybe. Yeah, I've had a I've had a really hard time reading this year. I I read a couple books um go during the the past year, but like this year, I just like I couldn't get into reading. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe yeah, we'll I'll try again next year. Bro, I'm terrible at reading. <laughs> I don't. I might have read one book start to finish in my entire life. <laughs> my brother, on the other hand, he will read a book in two days. Some people are like that. They he has like lost. his own book club, bro. Yeah, he. It, it's a joke to him, but he has his own book club because he reads so fast that yeah. he'll read the book and he'll. It's it's crazy. It's just hard for me to like be able to carve out time to just sit down for like yeah. thirty minutes and read. Yeah. Without my mind just wandering yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I know. I yeah. Mean, we're probably like the same. Yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. Spacey. As, and cre- <laughs> I think it comes with being a creative. Yeah. Yeah. You're always just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, but uh, last last question before we get to the the actual back end of the podcast. <laughs> um, I, I like to ask about you know people's. Um, like identity and like cultural identity mm-hmm. growing up, you know, mm-hmm. like coming from Hilo, like you and I both, we're not like, we don't look the most Hawaiian yeah. as in like what you would think a Hawaiian would look like when, yeah. you know, you see like Dukana Moku yeah. or Eddie Aika yeah. or whatever. Look at it, we're just like modern Kanaka, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, I've I've come to the point after having so many conversations and just reflecting on life, just like I'm totally happy and secure with who I am as a yeah. Hawaiian, as a as a Kanaka. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what's your experience with, with all of that? Mm. Bro, when the best way to we gotta we gotta start calling ourselves this. This this brother came to my pop up one time, like a couple months ago over here, and he said, What's up with my light skinned Hawaiian? <laughs> Light skin Hawaiian. I looked around. I was like, me? (laughs) Remember that, bro? So my light skin Hawaiian. That's funny because that's what they call black people. Yeah. 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 So it was was Uh, funny. I never um, thought about that. So I think, you know, like growing up, I never thought anything of it. I went to Mm Kamehameha. You gotta be Hawaiian Hawaiian too. Yeah, you gotta be Hawaiian to go there. Yeah, and then then I started surfing. So I had a a sweet tan through Mm -hmm. high school. So... Again, didn't really think anything of it until I moved to the mainland. Mm. So when I moved to the mainland, I started telling people like, oh, I'm Hawaiian. I'm from Hawaii. And then you get like mixed reactions. Mm. Some people are like, you're from Hawaii? Yeah. Mainly like Asian people would look Mm. at me and be like, you're from Hawaii? Yeah, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) Born and raised, 96720. (laughs) But uh, like the fair skin, you know, like white Hollywood People, they're like, no issues there. Oh, mm-hmm. awesome. You're from Hawaii. <laughs> Great. You know? Because to them, I guess they look at me. Like, he got dark hair, dark, you know. What? So maybe, yeah. But I honestly, my so, <laughs> my wife's mom, for the longest time when we were first like getting together, they're Filipino and her mom's pretty dark. Um, and their family, their her her dad actually worked on the sugarcane plantations in Hilo. Wow. So they moved to California. Their family, the mom's side, moved to California through Hilo, wow, through the crazy. plantations. Um, and my papa was there too, same time, in the twenties. In a, they were in Onomea or somewhere. And then my my papa was in Paoilo. So they're like one camp away from each other, mm-hmm. which blows my mind. Because Filipinos, you know Filipinos back in those camp days, they had big parties and they, they would all meet up at one camp and have these celebrations. My papa passed away, but I'm like, I guarantee he knew her papa, right? But anyway. That's a cool story. Pretty cool, right? Mm-hmm. So her mom is like, they're, they're darker, like field working looking Filipinos. So, bruh, for the first like, Five years, bro. She every time she's like, I just don't see it in you. <laughs> Are you bruh, sure? Bruh. <laughs> bruh, I used to get so offended, bro. 
<laughs> okay. Used to get so offended. Yeah. So like, like, bro, what the fuck she talking about? You know, like, oh, that's when, res- that's when that young kilo boy comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Put some respect on my name, right? Because in my head, I'm like, you're like, you're from Bakersfield, mm-hmm. California. Like, you're not from Hawaii. You're, you're in no position mm-hmm. to talk about this. I love her. Lonnie, if you're watching <laughs> this, I love you. <laughs> um, so, and then uh, we went to Hilo one time all together and literally everywhere we went in Hilo, whenever I'd leave the house, we'd run into somebody, Aaron, 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 Aaron. <laughs> And by the end of the trip, she was like, oh my God, you know everyone here. Because bro, literally we would go, we would go, corner side. Somebody called us like, Aaron, bro, what's up? Like, oh, Uncle Corey, what's up? <laughs> you know, so I ended up running into all these people that knew me. And she was like, from that point on, she never said anything. She's like, <laughs> she believes this you. guy's legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, that's probably like, yeah, I don't really, uh, I never really had any issues with being one light-skinned Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. But with her, that was the only issue I ever had. But yeah. she's cool. Yeah. She's, you know. That's funny. She didn't mean it in a mean way or anything. Oh she yeah, yeah. Like, but you're white. Yeah, no, gen- <laughs> it's sometimes it's genuine, genuine curiosity. Yeah. Like, yeah. wait, how how are you white but you're Hawaiian? Yeah. That doesn't like people can't really grasp. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I like the term light skin Hawaiian too, though. Brian, I'm Filipino too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Then then you're accepted when she finds out you're yeah. Filipino, right? What are you, Portuguese? I'm Portuguese, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Japanese, Korean. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, now I see the, the Korean and Japanese. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. yeah. That's I my see. Eyes. Yeah. I swear, every picture, I'm like, I gotta open my eyes more. No. It's just the way I, the way I smile. I don't know what it is. But yeah, that's just, it's such a, it's such a, a weird thing that we all gotta think about. Like, looking Hawaiian, but not being Hawaiian, being Hawaiian, but not looking Hawaiian. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, I'm kind of over it, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I think I've had enough conversations, at least for myself. And I hope that people oh, they're listening, listening yeah. and they're yeah. like, they have enough information to, you know, make their own decision on who who they are and what yeah. defines them as a yeah. Hawaiian and whatever. Like we, we've had hundreds of conversations. So yeah, yeah people can do that. Um, I'm trying to think about like what my next steps and I'm get, really getting into my Japanese side now. Mm. I started learning Japanese on Duolingo. Nice. Started watching anime. Nice. I want to go to Japan next year. Yeah, so yeah. cuz I feel like I've not mastered my Hawaiian side but like I've done enough no, you work. Have. Yeah. No, I've done enough work where I'm like I've reconnected to that yeah. side. Um now I'm just kind of like what's Broken next, through. you know? Cuz like yeah. same with you it's like okay. I've done this, but like, what's next? You know, yeah. what's the next challenge? You want to know what's one of my weirdest races that I want to get into of mine? Because like, I am I grew up with like… Well, Fili- I, already, I already know you got into Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got into Filipino. <laughs> I, I got into Filipino at least twice. At least twice. <laughs> <laughs> the, the right way. Um… Nah, bro. Like the one, uh, the one culture that I would wouldn't mind uh, learning more about. That is, you know, I feel like people in Hawaii wouldn't care to learn about. Is I'm German, mm. so my grandma is German, my mom's side, and so when I was younger, I thought like German. So you get the eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was younger, though, I thought like German. I was like, that's just like Nazis. Like, yeah, that's not yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to be German, you know? So, and then I got older and then I'm like, oh shit, like, Germany's got some cool stuff. They got, like, these cool cars. Like, their food is pretty cool. Like, they have really traditional things that, yeah, you know, that they enjoy their white culture. Yeah, I think hot dogs are actually not yeah. American. It's from Germ- yeah. Germany. Yeah, and uh, hamburgers. Yeah, hamburg- hamburgers. Yeah. Yeah. Hamburg. Yeah. yeah. Um, so… That's one of the cultures I wouldn't mind, you know, okay. tapping into and just yeah. not necessarily learning because I got to learn Hawaiian first. But mm-hmm. just, you know, maybe going there, meeting people, yeah. stuff like that. I, I think, think it's, it's cool it's, though because, yeah. you know, like, bro, we're so into our Hawaiian culture, which I love, right? Same. We love it because it's cool. Um, but then I do love learning about my other cultures mm-hmm. too because, like, I'm Chinese too. And so I asked this guy, <laughs> you know, shit. Yeah. Like, so… It's cool, you know, being because then it's like, bro, I'm proud of this, but I'm also proud of all these other things. And I think it's like 
I say this all the time at home. I'm like, like white people should be proud of their white culture. If they know that, well, like what type of, you know, wherever they came from, like where the, whether it be Spain, Germany, you know, wherever in Europe, it's like, those are, there's some shit to learn there, bro. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, dive into that. And, um, you know, so you feel like some, some people try to learn other people's cultures. Mm-hmm. Culture vultures. Yeah. When it's like, you don't necessarily need to learn someone else's. If start you don't with know your own. yours. Yeah, yeah. Start with your own. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yours is cool, bro. Mm-hmm. You just don't know it yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's just like whatever is deemed cool by society, you know, yep. like, especially we live in Hawaii. Learning Hawaiian culture is like the coolest yeah. thing. Being Hawaiian is the yeah. coolest thing. But yeah, like you said, I'm proud to be my other ethnicities. I just don't know as much about it as my Hawaiian side. Yeah. But yeah, it's a fun journey that we can, you know, get into. But Korean, bro. Yeah, come to LA. I know. I want to. Yeah, K-Town, you see me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're pretty good at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my grandma's 50% Korean. Oh, so. nice. Yeah. I, I, that, that's a, that's another journey. Got to get go go west instead of going east to America. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what's your future goals? Like what's the plan in the next, you know, 5, 10, 20 years? For our future goals, um, man, you know, get 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 a, a lot of projects going. So, you know, get this guy to go get married and buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, my future goals, you know, it's, it's, I just like to, I, want, I just want to keep this thing moving forward. Mm-hmm. And so to me, the future goals is just continuing to, to do it every day. Like how we said, bro, legends don't quit, right? So just keeping, keep moving forward, Imua, right? mm, as yeah. Auntie Pawahi mm-hmm. would say. And you know, get get more predominant, bigger projects that pay the bills enough so where we can have more of a free mind in between projects. Um, and I think all that comes with the economy, to be honest. Mm. So, but yeah, my that's my my goals is just to kind of do more more brand work, more corporate work. Um, and so I think in in due time it'll pick back up again. But to be honest, bro, this economy really affects creatives like mm, us because like Cause people's we, budgets. Yeah, because we mm. get a lot of like what what a lot of people may or may not know is like we get subsidized right from these brands. And you might look like a viewer might look at it as like, oh, this guy's so awesome. He's got sponsored. He's got all this money because he's sponsored. Da da da. But it's like, nah, like this, this, right? It goes to pay for this, and so, yeah, hmm. you know, getting more of these kind of things, like to write to make this kind of like your passion. Like we're here talking because of this, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm here because Levi's, and mm-hmm. you know, getting more of those kind of things so mm-hmm. we can be free yeah um because i do love you know working my online store and doing my own merch and stuff like that but it really does help so much when we get those corporate uh projects yeah Mm -hmm. you know where it's like Mm -hmm. i can go sit down in front of a wall and paint a mural for you two Mm -hmm. weeks and then i can go home hang out with my kids and Mm -hmm. yeah so i that's my Broad goals, okay. more projects. Yeah, we love projects. Awesome, and I know you're gonna kill it, definitely. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Okay. And what is one thing you wish people knew about you that they don't? Hmm. Something you think maybe you, they mi- they misunderstood. It's one favorite thing question. knew about me. Well, to your uh, mother-in-law, you're Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I would say, mm, I would say that I I don't know if this is something people don't know about me, but I'm very approachable in real life. So if you ever see me, don't be scared to say mm. hi. I'm not. Like one of those mean LA people, <laughs> <laughs> like, too cool to That's say. That's the other hi. Aaron, right? That's the Aaron Lau. Yeah, he's he's from California. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I, get, I mean, I get, I don't know. I feel like I put myself out there, so I don't know mm-hmm. if there's anything people don't really know about me. But that would be my one thing. Yeah, if you see me, say hi. Yeah, yeah. It does wonders for a creative, you know. And you come up to us and you say like, "Hey, I love your work." Like little things like that. I think it 
kind of brightens your day and not in an egotistical way, but just kind of like um, how that, that girl's question about when you feel like quitting, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily that I feel like quitting, but it just makes you, it's, it, it, it reinforces yeah. that you're doing the right thing and that yes. you're, you're, what you're doing is working and people are seeing it and they enjoy mm-hmm. it. And so, yeah, 100%. So if you see any, any creative really that you are like fond of, don't be shy, I think, to go yeah. up to them and say, love your work. Yeah. Give them the lay when they're still around. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right on. So I can't let you leave until you let me know what is your life hack. Ooh, my life hack. Uh, my life hack is going back to something we talked about um, earlier on the podcast. I think happiness. Um, so my current life hack, I think they change, right? Mm-hmm. A lot, like often. So my current life hack is like how I was saying, have those small conversations with strangers throughout the day. Because for me, it makes me feel like so good to just talk to a stranger. Like, how's your day going? Mm -hmm. And actually have like a real… Like, yeah. Sometimes you're just saying it, right? Like, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually, you know, engage in a conversation. I think it sounds so simple and so like, this ain't a life hack, Aaron. But I think it does. It changes your whole perspective of like… For one, you in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm like, look at me, I'm talking to strangers, like I'm engaging in mm-hmm. people that I don't know. And then for two, you're just like, I don't have no idea what that person's going through, how their life is, but you know, we just interacted, and I'm sure that's gonna add something to their day. Mm-hmm. So I think you know, it makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I love that. Talk awesome. to strangers, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be afraid. Not don't in a scare weird them, way, go get them. Yeah. <laughs> if free candy on the van, don't talk to them. <laughs> don't bro. talk to those strangers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Here are my last fast fade five questions. They're just rapid fire answers, okay? Mm-hmm. Favorite way to recharge? Ooh, uh, beach or sleep. Mm. It's very good. Actually, wait, another one. Watch TV. Nice. What what do you want? Reality TV. Okay, well, one of my questions is favorite TV show. Ooh. Right now. You guys got to watch Love After Lockup. Love After Lockup. Is that like somebody who finds love after being in jail or something? Yeah. <laughs> so it's about these pen pals who write to these people in jail. Guys and girls. Uh-huh. So it's like a guy, you know, like they write to these people in jail and then they start a relationship after. <laughs> it's just so… That's like, crazy. Why would you want to date someone who just got out of jail? You got to watch it. It's like okay. a train wreck. It's so good. Well, what what station is that on? Is that like uh, a true TV kind of thing? No, or? it's a, almost. It's like TLC. Okay, okay. Yeah. One of those. That's what I was thinking. A step above true TV. It's <laughs> trashy. So it's trashy. Okay. All right. I like trashy TV. Yeah, it, it gives me… Where you don't really got to think, yeah, right? Yeah, I don't want to think about… Yeah, yeah. I, I need something that's so like trashy. It makes me forget about… Mm-hmm. The mural I got to paint, the project I'm working on, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the no, kids I being irritating. Yeah, I feel you. Okay. Favorite childhood snack? Ooh, bro. Anything lihi mui, but I would probably have to say… Ah, those gummy… The lihi mui gummy bears or the lihi mui uh, strawberry belts from 7-Eleven. Ooh, yeah. But like back in the day, you know, they changed them, huh? Now it's just like… I like the, the Asia trans one. Yeah. That's like the, the one with like. choke. Gotta yeah. have choke lihi mui on top. Yeah, hey, yeah. no, no, be skimpy on the lihi mui. They skimp, bro. Yeah. Seven hey, Eleven. I know you sponsor. Yeah, hey, well, they're a past sponsor. Yeah, Seven Eleven. Come All on. Right, okay, and, but you know, if you guys like take some suggestions, maybe you make one like ultimate lihi mui pack. Oh, nice. You know? Extra lihi mui. Yeah, I pay extra. Yeah, you know, like um. The, what is the pizza a la slice at the Prince Creole Plaza? Oh, yeah. They got the icy and they yeah. can add the lihi mui yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody should just have like extra lihi mui pack. Yeah. Everywhere they go. Yeah. yeah. Wherever you go, yeah. just extra lihi yeah. mui. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, I should just carry it on me. On yeah, that person. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. like those little packs. I think you can get them at, at some stores. Yeah. All right. Now my cousin sell that kind. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You got a cousin that do that. <laughs> All right. Favorite travel destination outside of Hawaii? Um, Japan, because we just went. I gotta get there. Okay, here I just I'm just gonna change um this last one, just because Aaron's right there. Favorite thing about Aaron Lau? (laughs) (laughs) 
favorite thing about Aaron Lau. Since he's been waiting so patiently. So patiently. Um, I would say his level-headed attitude towards business. You know, you need someone who's not going to necessarily think with the passion, but kind of be more of a… Logical. Yeah, a voice of reason. Instead of emotional. Um, but yeah, and then he's always here, kicking it. Good, chilling. We get good convos, you know. Yeah, yeah, we talk yeah. about some stuff that just cracks us up. Yeah, you know. And then we bounce a little, bounce a little idea. I mean, he he got a girlfriend, so he goes, you know, what, what do I do about this? <laughs> <laughs> She's not letting me watch basketball. Today. <laughs> You know, and then I, you know, and I might come in and say, bro, my wife won't let me watch the car auctions. <laughs> it's life, bro. They're never going to let you watch nothing you want to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you like Love After Lockup. <laughs> Kardashians. That's so funny. Um, but yeah, my, I don't know, bro. There's so many things to list, you know, mm-hmm. my favorite thing about him. Love that. His name. His name right there. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a, And that's a great way to end the podcast. <laughs> well, that's all we have. I just want to say mahalo for coming over here, stopping Bro. by. You got you got here before I did. You know, you're, <laughs> you're so good. Um, and like, good luck with the, the Levi's things. When this comes out, it'll, it'll already pass. But yeah. good luck with that. I'm going to try to stop by. Just love everything that you're doing, and you're Mahalo, just bro. a role model for everybody in Hilo. You Mahalo. know, so it's like it's inspiring to me and a lot of people. So keep it up. Thank you, bro. Yeah. I try. I'm trying. You know. Yeah, yeah. We're and now trying. you're not trying. You're doing. Yeah. I try. But I try, I try. Uh, anything else you want to share? If not, tell us where we can find you. Where we can find your online merch. Sure. Um. Nice. No, thanks for your time. Thanks for mm. having me. Um. Yeah. AaronKai.com and follow me at Aaron K Kai. And that K stands for Kalei Nani, baby. That's my yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, mahalo, Aaron, for joining us on the last episode of the Keep It Low podcast for 2023. Spread love, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. We have new episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka. Have a great new year. Don't drink too much, but if you do, just have one driver because then you can drink a lot. Pop the illegal fireworks. Be nice to everybody. Don't, pop Don't get into too much trouble. Don't pop your hand off. Um, go check and out our clean stuff. clean the street after you pop on a firecracker. Oh, yes, clean yes. Clean your red yes, stuff, yes, bro. Exactly. Clean them. There's a lot of red wrappers. Clean them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and remember to always keep it aloha. <laughs> right on. Solid, bro. Yes.